Welcome to IGM Guru. IGM Guru is one of the global leading online training and certification provider for IT expert by the skilled IT gurus to help them achieve their professional goals. Uh, for today's session, we'll be covering the ex uh, exploration of the world of generative AI. The agenda for today's uh, webinar is Introduction to Generative AI, covering the real-world applications, famous applications, how actually generative AI works, and types of generative AI, creative AI showcase, the curriculum content that we will be covering for the next uh, couple of hours, and the question and answers. So coming to the introduction to generative AI. Gen it, generative AI represents a significant leap in the field of artificial intelligence. At its core, it's about enabling machines to create content without having every step explicitly programmed. So you can imagine it this, this way, that a com teaching a computer to be creative, allowing it to generate text, images, music, or even entire pieces of content without being given strict step-by-step -step instructions. So along with that, it has uh, unle uh, unleashed the creativity. It empowers the computers to generate text, music, images, and more. It can take many forms, like text generation is a very common example. You would have uh, likely encountered it in your auto suggestions when composing an email or a text. So when you are doing so, AI actually understands your uh, writing style, the context of the conversation, and even popular phrases. Based on that, it helps to gen uh, generate actually the mu uh, music or text, whatever you want to create. So uh, in contrast to that, gen uh, generative AI learns and creates in a more human-like way. It learns from the data and experience, allowing it to adapt and generate content beyond the scope of explicit instructions. So for example, you would have seen OpenAI's this G, uh, GPT-3, which we commonly know as uh, this thing, chat GPT. So it is actually pre-trained on large corpus of uh, text from the internet, enabling it to understand and generate text on a wide range of topics and styles. So it helps us gen uh, generate how actually humans learn by reading and listening to diverse sources. So it is actually in contrast to the traditional AI or as we say as, say as rule-based AI. So it actually also allows us to uh, uh, enable new possibilities wherein it actually helps us drive innovation across various domains. Give an example of that in medical field. It's used to generate synthetic data for research and training purposes, which accelerates medical breakthroughs and helps in training healthcare professionals. Similar to the, sim, uh, the case that I given in the medical field, financial institu institutions utilize generative AI for fraud detection. How it actually is done is these systems can analyze vast amounts of transaction data to detect unusual patterns, enabling quicker and more accurate identification of fraudulent activities, ultimately safeguarding the whole online financial transactions. So giving you a process of that, generative AI promises to redefine human machine collaboration and creative expression. So the next thing which comes into picture is what are the real world applications. The real world applications may vary from art and creativity to design and architecture. So giving you a real world exam uh, applications of these, I encourage you to sh actually share any instance if you have, if you can speak and if you can tell me the real world applications that you have would have seen recently in this particular uh, era of generative AI. First, coming to art and creativity. Generative AI is truly changing the way we perceive art and creativity. For instance, the famous artwork, which is portrait of Edmond de Bellamy, was generated by a GAN model. GAN model is an example of generative AI, which is generative adversarial network. 
and it was actually sold at four lakh thirty two thousand dollar at auction. So if you have any example of that, if you want to share for for this particular example, you can write down onto the chat, and after this whole webinar, we can even discuss that. That will be very interesting to know. So uh, coming to the next part, next is text generation. So think about the text suggestions that appear when you are composing a message on your smartphone. So they actually predict what comes next before based on the context of their conversation. Have you seen any such uh, conversations or whichever smartphone you are using? Can you please uh, write down the things that you have seen for text generation or autocomplete suggestions that you have seen onto your smartphone on, on this particular chat itself. That will be very helpful. Next, coming to image generation. So OpenAI has opened up, sorry, Generative AI has opened up new possibilities for image generation and manipulation. For example, this remarkable uh, thing that comes into picture that this per person does not exist is it's a website that generates entirely uh, fictitious faces of non-existent people. So how interesting is this? Like we are able to create unique melodies, sorry, unique people, unique, uh, the ones that are not existing or adding the uh, faces of the people who, who are not even uh, similar, but who are not even known to each other, but making them similar this way, it's a powerful tool for graphic design and creative projects. Next, it, it comes to music composition. For music composition, it's like a whole new world of creation of music for musicians and compo uh, composers. So it can generate original compositions in various styles and it can help us actually create even entire musical compositions with unique melodies and harmonies. Next, coming to design and architecture. It's actually revolutionizing the design process, helping architects, interior designers, and urban planners envision new spaces and structures. It, now it's not about restricted to the knowledge only of that particular architect and interior designer. The, the AI will help the interior designer and the architect design the whole room based on your choice, preference, context, and whatever you give to the architect so that if it's properly given the prompt, the architect and the interior designer can design the space and structure according to your need, your choices, and your preference. So how interesting is this? Like we can actually move on for a new world of things with just generative AI. Giving an example of famous applications, you would have seen Daily 2, which is an image generator, which actually creates realistic and surreal images from the text prompt. What you need to do is you need to just create a prompt. Prompt is just a text instruction that you give to a generative AI model. Based on your text, how well you create a prompt, it actually creates realistic and surreal images. And believe me, I've seen the images. You can't uh, validate it, whether it's a original one or an image and, or a created by generative AI. So the main thing that comes or a new avenue that comes here is gen prompt engineering. The prompt, the field of prompt engineering is completely new and you can explore that and, and the topmost salary that a person is getting is of a prompt engineer nowadays. How far it will go, that's completely dependent on how generative AI will be taken into consideration. But yes, prompt engineering, in, uh, sorry, prompt engineer is actually getting a lot of benefits from the upcoming or the enhancements of generative AI techniques being used nowadays from all of all across the industry. Next, we all know and have been exploiting gen, uh, chat GPT. What is chat GPT? Chat GPT is a conversational AI. It holds engaging and informative conversations on a wide range of topics. Next, Bard by Google. So it generates different creative text forms of, uh, of text content like poems, code, 
scripts, musical pieces, emails, letters, or even it actually helps us to provide the images as well. Not only as uh, unlike this chat GPT, it also helps us provide the images as well. Next comes the Imagen by Google itself. So it's an image and video generator which actually helps us create high quality images and videos just by your text prompt. So as you can see, the input is just a text prompt. Based on that text prompt, how well you create that text prompt, it actually helps us provide the applications, whether it's images, music, text, whatever you take into consideration. Next, how actually generative AI works. I'll be considering it in two uh, perspectives. One is from a non-technical person who has, I'm considering a person who is, who has very less knowledge of technicalities of uh, large language models or natural language uh, programming, uh, natural language processing per se, or if the person is very new to the things and wants to explore the technicalities, I'll be con uh, considering this particular slide. So generative AI is like AI's version of creativity. It's a bit like having an AI artist, writer or musician. So let me actually break it down for you. Imagine you are scrolling through your social media feed and you come across a breathtaking pa a painting. You actually wonder who is the artist, but here's the twist. There was no human artist. This artwork was actually created by computer. You couldn't actually understand whether it's a one by an artist, an original artist or by a computer. That's how actually generative AI came into picture. And this is generative AI at work using its understanding of art to generate beautiful paintings. So how beautiful it is. They are actually creating art, writing something or music to actually get it better in place. So with technology, you are actually getting new content and uh, by actually predicting the patterns. So actually it's all about the technical stuff. It's It seems like a magic, but it's actually the technical stuff. So covering to the technical part of that. So generative AI is actually driven by the neural networks, which are mathematical models inspired by the human brain. These networks are made up of interconnected artificial neurons and they are what actually creates the magic. So the training which involves is exposing the AI to vast amounts of data and adjusting its internal parameters. So you can consider image generation. So when you input a description like, suppose I want to put it in this way, a, a red apple on a wooden table. This actually breaks down into mathematical patterns. It actually understands red as a specific color or a specific set of color values, apple as a shape and a wooden table as textures. So this is how uh, the neural network takes these patterns and creates an image that actually fits the description. So it's all about mathematics, data and computational power. It's not required that you come from a, a CS background or a technical or a data science background to understand generative AI. Even if you are from the mathematics, economics or the statistical background, it's completely fine for you to actually deep dive into technical stuff. So that's a new era that you can understand, a new concept that is very interesting for you. So there are very uh, various architectural approaches that we, we will be covering, GANs, RNNs and uh, Transformers. There are many others as well, but primarily for this webinar, I'll be co covering GANs, RNNs and Transformers that are the base behind generative AI. So covering about uh, types of generative AI models. So, First come the GANs. GANs are actually the basically uh, AI artists. They are like painters that create art and at the same time have a critical friend to give actually feedback. So this is how you can imagine GANs as. GANs consists of two neural networks, a generator and a discriminator. 
the generator creates data like images and so from random noise and the discriminator tries to distinguish between real and generated data they compete and through this process gans produce incredibly realistic content so actually the art which we see is a combination of generator and a discriminator next come the rnns rnns are like the storytellers so they read a book and tell you what's actually happening with, uh, while remembering the context so the main thing that is required in rnns are context so rnns are specialized for processing sequences they are used for tasks involving time series natural language processing and more so you can understand in this particular way you think of a ai chatbot where rnns make sure that the conversation flows naturally along with putting it on topic next is transformers uh giving you a context you can give, uh, think them as multilingual translators multilingual means which actually can work on any type of language or multiple type of language maybe whether it's with chinese japanese german every type of thing it's done by transformers so this is a architecture of uh, transformer if anyone is interested in technicalities where we have uh, embeddings and we give the out uh, get the output probabilities so transformers are versatile models that excel at understanding context and relationships within the data they are used in tasks like translation text summarization and question answering you would have heard about google's bird it is also a type of transformer which has actually revolutionized search by understanding the context of words in a query making search results more accurate and helpful i hope by this particular slide you would have gone got to know that what all will be covering by technicalities and what sort of way we are covering for non technical to technical uh, aspects so this is a gist of types of generative ai models next let's see the creative ai showcase so i have given like for the next slides i am i am trying to make you understand how actually generative ai has empowered ai to actually create the uh, art design storytelling music production even fashion design so how these industries have been affected or helped by generative ai models so we'll see in couple of minutes and then we'll be further coming coming to our uh, last or uh, the the final thing that is the course curriculum so coming to the creative ai showcase so the first thing is ai generated art Gen uh, generative ai models have the remarkable capability to create stunning and unique works of art for instance the ai artist gan, gan junin the basically that's by a gan model which actually uses generative adversarial networks that scans to produce captivating visuals that blend elements of realism and abstraction similarly the ai artist memo utilizes diffusion models that's also a, a generative ai model to generate dream like landscapes and portraits that evoke a sense of wonder in basically the arts so this is how ai generated art can be used by generative ai models and to create stunning and unique arts so this is just a few example that generative ai is being used to push the boundaries of artistic expressions i just want to have few questions from your end and similar way you can post it on to the chat group and after this particular webinar we can actually discuss these particular comments that you have uh, posted on so can you actually think of any other examples of ai generated text or art that you find particularly striking so you have would have seen some uh, thing on instagram on facebook or anything that you have would have come across so that will be very helpful or interesting to know if you would have seen or if you can put a link of that particular thing and seeing this particular thing or this showcase what do you think are the unique strengths of ai as an artistic medium or how far it can be taken 
or what applications can be used for this particular art. I hope that will be very interesting if I can see some comments on this particular showcase. Next is AI powered design. So coming to AI powered design, generative AI is also being used to assist with a wide range of design tasks. For example, the company Autodesk Dreamcatcher uses AI to generate product concepts and design iterations. Similarly, a company Adobe stock, it actually offers a variety of AI powered tools for creating marketing materials and developing visual contents. These tools can help designers to save time and explore new creative possibilities. So coming again to uh, you only like how how you can help us with the comments. Have you ever used any AI powered uh, design tool or how was your experience so that we can discuss what are the pros and cons of these and what are some of the challenges and opportunities of using AI in design. That will be very helpful if you can cre uh, send this on to the chat so that we can even discuss that. So this is one of the uh, image that I created through AI itself. I just gave a prompt that helped me understand with this thing and it actually gave me this particular image. Like how interesting it, it is that we can even create this sort of uh, images or unique images through generative AI. Next is AI driven storytelling. It can be used to create engaging and impressive stories. So Actually, the companies are actually developing AI powered tools for creating interactive stories and games, even to generate scripts for television shows and films. P uh, companies are actually using gen generative AI. So you would have seen this, uh, this movie Lion King. So it had many components of AI in it, in it basically. So it can be used for these particular things. For any such example, if you have, you can even post on the chat. So you can even tell us what are the, some of the ways that AI can be used to enhance the storytelling experience. Next, coming to AI enhanced music production. So generative AI can be used to help musicians compose new music, create sound effects and produce audio content. It's not just limited to images, text, videos, it's also enhancing audio production. It may be taken into consideration for generating data for uh, this thing, for synthetic data for your medical context as well, where you can actually synthesize the data for your uh, chest uh, x-rays or for your um, heartbeats. You can actually synthesize the data and you can you train your models for these particular things. Next is AI facilitated fashion design. So generative AI can be used to design clothing, accessories and textiles. For example, this particular company, Melibo, it actually created fashion collections that can be customized and produced on demand. These images are not generated or clicked by uh, anyone. These are actually generated by generative AI. So how interesting it is. You need not actually have actual uh, brand or actual things in place before you start a brand. You just have ideas, you just have images and just give me a second. You just have images, you post it onto your website based on the demand. You actually create the things on the go based on the customer's need. You actually create the things on the go. How interesting it is. So there is no investment, no nothing. You're just posting the images and getting the orders. So it completely depends on your prompt, your creativity to have technical stuff. And then based on that, you can get the things ready. So yeah, that's the main thing. That's all from my side based on technicalities, non-technicalities, use cases, everything that majorly covers generative AI from a broader perspective. Coming to the uh, curriculum, we will be covering basics 
too advanced part of generative AI. So it's not only limited to this particular thing. We may or may not add uh, things on this. So based on the plan that you choose or based on the uh, things that you choose, it is completely dependent. So one first is uh, introduction to generative AI. Next is fundamentals of neural networks, covering the building blocks of generative AI. Recurrent neural networks that form the base of uh, generative AI. Then generative adversarial networks, sequence to sequence models, transformers and natural and uh, attention mechanisms. We will be covering natural language processing as well for the novice users. And then going to the advanced part of these networks. Then how do we actually fine tune the large language models? Mm -hmm. Then using open AI and uh, open source large language models. Then image based generative AI models, prompt covering the prompt tuning concepts and prompt engineering and what are the state of art techniques that are being used for having less data and generating more specific content. The ethical considerations which should be taken into consideration for any AI or generative AI models, covering the real world applications, challenges and future directions and we will be covering all this with hands-on experience. It's not just we are going to cover uh, the, uh, the theoretical concepts or model concepts. We will be doing everything with hands-on. So it will be mix and like half and half for, uh, for your, tech, uh, for your uh, conceptual and for your hands-on experiences. Finally, we will be having assignments, projects and presentations for your particular course. So I hope that's clear. And if any doubts, you may ask me. And yeah, that's all from my side. Now, which are all companies using generative AI? Almost every organization that is with the uh, industry standards, that is actually having a, a lot of data so they are using, may it be medical, may it be banking, may it be fi uh, finance sector, may it be industry sector, may it be chemical industries. They all are actually uh, exploiting the use of uh, this thing, generative AI, so that they are up to the mark with the market standards and they can exploit the use of generative AI. So this is not that big giants are only using. Any organization you take into consideration they are slowly or steadily they are moving towards generative AI and those who haven't even started with their infrastructure of AI they are even hiring uh, consultants who, are, who have good experience in AI so that they can build their uh, frameworks in such a manner that it's actually uh, with the market standards so that it actually helps people to give the predictions, classifications, and generations based on their data. So I hope that answers your question. Okay. Thanks for watching the video. For full course, please visit www.igmguru.com and enroll today.